Hello everyone. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Patne Langozo. Today we are talking about voters registration and education. We want to know the importance of voters registration and voters education. Why is it important to register to vote? The coronavirus has negatively affected the voters registration for people in Zimbabwe with the current restrictions limiting them to obtain required documents. So on our show today, we have Zesmi, Zimbabwe Election Support Network, Ellen Dingani, to explain to us why it is important to register to vote and also on voters' education, what she thinks the government should do because of the pandemic now, there is less voters' education. So she has to explain to us what she thinks the government should do in order for us to have voters' education. Over to you, Ellen. So voter registration, as we are aware, it's one of the key electoral processes that we have um, on the electoral cycle. And uh, in our case in Zimbabwe, it's continuous. So people can actually register uh, throughout the, the, the year um, during business hours. And currently it's happening at provincial and district offices of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Um, so yeah, as we've asked about voter registration in view of the delimitation, yes, there should be actually a blitz of voter registration um before the delimitation and that should be undertaken by zec it's one of the things and and key um, issues that we have tried to raise with them that there's need to ensure that uh, more people actually register as voter registration has got an impact on the delimitation uh of uh, of boundaries and um with the covid 19 continuing we know that uh, the process poses a challenge and uh, we are still trying also to to find innovative ways to encourage ZEC to 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 adapt. For example, one of the things that we have asked ZEC to do is to try and register um, uh, people at strategic places. For example, in the rural areas, they can actually try and uh, put some um, temporary water registration centers at growth points. And um, even in urban areas, they can also try to do that at uh, strategic places like um, shopping centers. I'm thinking of areas like uh, even Chitungwiza, where we have many citizens residing in that metropolitan city. And then uh, uh, we also know the dangers that are posed with COVID uh, when people are congested and when people um, are found in one place at the same time. So we want ZEC to employ as many um, uh, innovative ways of ensuring that um, there's adherence to the COVID regulations and uh, people also um, uh, are, short, uh, are, sorry, are, are social distancing and also wearing masks in addition to other COVID, um, in addition to, to, to all the other uh, safe measures that we, we continue to be to be provided with information on this day basis. Um, our other our other worry that we have noted has been the distances uh, to the registration centers that are uh, alluded to that probably ZEC should uh, employ innovative ways to decentralize further the registration. Uh, we have some examples of some registration centers that are 60 kilometers away from people. One in one incident uh, cases of um, residents or citizens in uh, in Umkusa South who have uh, uh, their center, their district center, the nearest is actually in um, in Vilabos. So in such cases, we are also employing ZEC to to decentralize, like I've mentioned before. And then there's also need for voter education and uh, to educate citizens about this process and why it is important 
this can be done by civic society. This can also be done by uh, social media groups, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations, and also ZEC. Basically, the other stakeholders, their role is to complement the civic education that is supposed to be provided by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. So we are saying also because of the COVID context, the COVID um, uh, environment that we are in, uh, they need to employ innovative means to reach out to as many people as we can. And one way we have been doing that as Zimbabwe Election Support Network is been to use radio to reach out to many citizens and encourage them to participate in the key electoral process. Uh, that is voter registration. And we're also employing ZEC to use um, things like short message service, that is SMS, also to reach out to people in the rural areas and for those in urban areas to also explore uh, using social media and also WhatsApp groups. So if they can actually open up some WhatsApp groups where people can exchange information and also where people can receive information and forward them to their other groups, I think that would be very helpful. And even the need to publicize the voter registration centers where exactly they are and um, the uh, physical address so that people are aware of the uh, location of these um, uh, registration centers. Lena Lipugen, Jan Logton, and Jan Matla, Vesuli, Kamalam, Twang, and Nupaks on Lofu, and Muntu O S. Chagumanga Ting, Mumuti, Nesulu, O Kulele Logos, and Lela Esho. So, the places here corner, San Anzele Luguti, Cecilia Figures Cutting, so Guti, Uela, my elections is in Bab. Good on your gang is booze and Jane is Lalling it to Guti. Law my elections, the away the in Gumben Gulending, Governor Siwen Day. Well, for the past twenty years, as I'm a swelling Gugu, a little my elections la. So, super of Carlin's Langananalo. Gang began a lend dab, Umbello dab. Lavacha, Bafunu, Palisa, who voted, good abacha. Seven and the little good to warner. Bama Pisa, Gagama politicians. I have a phone through them. So, a first point I am your booty. I have a child who register as I'm a voter. I'm a voter for the past 20 years. I'm a election in Zimbabwe. We go Manchester to a skew a rhetoric. I go to a solution everywhere through my elections. And some of them is Kulmala, but never see die. Kinas Bonnet and political action is solution. Zimbabwe in crisis it and my elections. Point number two, Susan and the Lel Guti Ijombe, Mobukulubai, Ilama Point, Essing at Matatu in terms of growth points. Slessy is less again embrace, Sibele Jombe, Sibele Zoro. So as Begeles and Dow was this in that Zonan the Lel Guti Parat won't get up, a wool and Dow Lapong, a Kwanisa Konuti, Umun to Omucha, I am happy, I am Palisa Uford. So problem number two, you go to go. About you know, you go to ba ba oni le economical in Tanzania, ma go mikono. Go in da ba zogu vota vele ngana zilanda. So munte ngakanyela it distance from go go tevenda from la pasha la go. Go zai figa go to eli la pogle registration send. Usa nanzele go to atu na setino. E munte aba go go register go. Babella. Now I'll give this opportunity to Caesar Senkosi Gwenya. Over to you, Mrs. Caesar Senkosi Gwenya, to explain to us the challenges being faced by women and youth in Silobela. What is really happening? The challenges they are facing in trying to register to vote. Can you please explain to us? No birth centers, no birth center in rural areas, which means you have to go to the district centers. In addition, there are no voter registration centers, while well, they open occasionally. The problem is you might not be there at that time. <coughs> you may not be there at that particular time, which means you will be skipped. 
voter education in rural areas is not is not robust. If anything, if anything, politicians just instill fear in people that you do not vote for us, we will deal with you. There is a lot of vote buying in rural areas. And if NGOs and activists are there, they are threatened with violence. Also, literacy level in rural areas are low. Thank you so much, Mrs. Nguenya, for explaining to us. Now over to you, Your Honor, Mr. Tokozi Simanoki Pofu, the Member of Parliament for Silovela. Can you please explain to us the challenges youth in your community are facing, how COVID-19 has affected voters' registration in your community, and what you are doing so far to encourage youth to vote, also on voters' education, what have you done so far? Over to you, Mr. Mpofu. <clears throat> yes, good afternoon. Yeah, people that are doing voter registration, but at a low level at the moment, because of this uh, COVID-19, in bits and pieces they are registering, but we've been encouraging them throughout. But we're having a major challenge in the COVID-19. The youth who are trying to encourage them, they say those who were um, below 18 in the last elections, now they attempt to, to register to vote. We are doing voter education wherever we get the chance to meet them. But the challenge at the moment is that we can't uh, gather people. So we'll be, we'll be meeting them in bit and pieces, bit and pieces. And once maybe COVID uh, is done, then maybe uh, we'll be able to monitor, monitor it uh, effectively. Currently, uh, we have a challenge because this COVID, uh, it really, now it's closing up in my constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mpofu, uh, for that presentation. Uh, it seems that youths in Slovela and people in Slovela are facing a very difficult time because of COVID-19 in order for them to register to vote. So now I think I'll give this opportunity to Zimbabwe Organization for Youth and Politics, Mr. Moyo. To explain to us what he thinks that what what he thinks uh, the youth should do in order to register to vote, what he thinks the government should do to encourage youths to register to vote. Over to you, Ngoslati. So first and, so first and foremost, on the question of the demands, the new demands which were put on the someone to, re, to register to vote in Zimbabwe, to have a voter registration, a letter from the village head, a letter from the landlord, proof of residence, and all those stuff. That's, this, that actually disenfranchises first-time voters. Most of them are young people. They're coming from high school. They're trying from the co they're coming from the college. They're trying to find themselves. They can hardly find those letters. You know, so it, it's very difficult for them to then get re registered. And when you look at it from the perspective of a rural, uh, uh, the rural part of Zimbabwe, the villages, most of them are suspected or, or, or are, are known to be partisan. Then those who are suspected or perceived to be members uh, of uh, uh, the opposition, they will find it very difficult to register to vote because the villagers can deny you uh, that particular letter. So voter registration must not have all those demands. If you're Zimbabwean, you have a national ID, that should be easier for you. Go to the nearest reg registration and if your ID is verified and, 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 and seen that it's authentic, then you must re register to vote. What's the need to have all those letters, this and that, when you have an authentic national ID? That does not uh, um, uh, actually make sense. And also to make it easier, it shouldn't be like 
like if we look at Kwekwe, you, you have to go to town, you know, to go to that exact office close to, to, to the social welfare office. Let, let's, let, let them uh, decentralize it. If you are in Brazil, you can. There must be a point where you can get registered. If in Amaveni, there must be a point. If you are in Tegarif, there must be there must be some satellite points where one can uh, access that. You shouldn't suffer. You shouldn't sacrifice a lot to get registered. So the government must invest in that uh, particular uh, uh, decentralization process of making sure that everyone access the uh, uh, voter re registration facility close to their locality and close. To, to where I say it should be made a very difficult process. This is to ensure that we don't leave anyone behind, we don't disenfranchise any of uh, our Zimbabweans who need to exercise their constitutional rights to vote. Thank you all for listening to our show. Let's register to vote. Let's check if our names are in the voters roll. It's our right as Zimbabweans to register to vote. All youths, I encourage you to register to vote. First time voters, please try and register to vote. Your vote, your right. Bye-bye.